Hey folks, we're going to continue our discussion of RC circuits uh, as they're charging, uh, and we're going to talk eventually about current and uh, potential energy. Uh, so I, I put a quick review here of the equation we derive for a charging capacitor um, in a simple 1R, 1C circuit. Um, and don't worry, we're going to get more complicated circuits later, <laughs> but for now we're sticking with these ones. Uh, now, be able to do the math to get to this equation. But from here, I'm going to use this equation. So the first thing I'll mention is that the voltage okay, across the capacitor will equal, it'll be the same function. It'll be E times 1 minus E to the negative T over tau, okay, tau still being RC. So uh, the voltage increases with time. When you close the switch, the voltage of the capacitor increases until it's equal to the battery voltage. Now, it'll be the opposite orientation, you know, so like, your battery's this, your capacitor will be that, okay, so they'll be pointed the opposite way, um, but the, the magnitude of the voltage will be this. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is what was the current flowing over time. So we talked about already the current when you first close the switch, well, the capacitor will behave like a wire. So the current will just be voltage over resistance. After a long, long time, the current will be zero because the, the capacitor is an actual open circuit, and so charge will stop flowing, and it, uh, there'll be no current. So how do we get current? Okay, well, we know that current is the time derivative of charge. So what we're going to do is take the derivative of the current as a function of time. So if we do that, we have our constant out front, the derivative of 1 is 0, okay? And the derivative of e to the negative uh, t over rc, um, so we have the minus, and then we have uh, negative 1 over rc, okay? e to the negative t over rc. So I'm just taking the derivative of an exponent, basically. Uh, when you do this, you'll notice that the c's drop out here and here. Okay, so those are gone. Uh, the negatives drop out, okay? And you end up with E over R times exponent negative T over RC. So that is our current as a function of time, okay? So, and the current at zero seconds, E to zero is one. You get the current of E over R. After a long, long time, e to the negative big number is zero, and your current is zero. So it does follow those functions that we talked about. Okay. Um, now again, sometimes we'll call this current in the front. We'll call the coefficient i max, and then you have e, and then this is negative t, and then of course rc is we call that tau. So you can write current as a function of time this way as well. Okay. Um, now a, a quick note. So we've seen two functions here with exponents. We've seen 1 minus e to the negative t over tau. And now we have just e to the negative t over tau. So one thing to keep in mind when you're doing all this math or when you're thinking about which function is appropriate for your situation, this first function goes from a max to a 0. So like when, when time equals 0, e to the 0 um, is... Uh, I'm sorry, I lied. This goes from a zero to a max. I apologize. Uh, when time equals zero, e to the zero is one. One minus one is zero. After a long, long time, e to the negative big number is zero. One minus zero is one. That's a max. Okay. E to the negative t over tau does the opposite. It starts at a max and drops to zero. So when you have e to the zero, you get one. That's your max. When you got e to the negative big number, that's zero. So if you're trying to think about which function you should get an answer for, should I get an E function or a 1 minus E function, just think about the starting and final conditions of those, those equations. Uh, another th good thing to do is to graph. What's the graphs look like for voltage across, or sorry, sorry, for charge across the capacitor as a function of time? And current in the circuit as a function of time. So the charge starts at zero and has a max. That max value is EC. So that would be a horizontal asymptote. So your graph would go like that. It would grow. Uh, your current starts off at a max. That's E over R. And decays. 
to zero. Okay, so it's good to know the, the what the functions look like over time. Okay, now one last thing I'll make a note on when you're charging a capacitor up is what about the energy? Okay, so the total work done by the battery to charge that capacitor up will be Q times E. And I'll write that E appropriately. So E being the EMF. Okay, so we know that work equals Q times voltage. Okay, so for the battery, it's Q times E. But the potential energy stored in the capacitor is one half Q times the voltage. And when it's all said and done, that's one half Q E. All right, so you might notice something. The battery does so much work, but only half of that gets stored in, in the end, it's stored in the capacitor. Where the other half go? Well, when you're charging a capacitor up, that current has to flow through the wires and the resistor. When current flows through a resistor, you generate heat. So when we charge a capacitor up, at best, you're going to get half the energy in the capacitor. The other half will be lost as heat in the circuit. Um, we will talk in, in subsequent discussions about uh, like energy uh, stored in a capacitor as a function of time how much work the battery does as a function of time. So that stuff is coming up. All right, I hope that video was helpful and thank you very much.